You're live from the floor of the NYC with Jim Kramer. Jim, what's top of mind for you this morning? Boeing. Okay, because Calhoun gave a great, great talk yesterday. And uh, we just interviewed Gary Kelly, straight shooting CEO of Love, Southwest Air. He is so confident that this thing is going to come back online and we're not going to be thinking about uh, flying it because he says, listen, why would a pilot willingly go into a plane that might crash? So he's just basically saying, hey, listen, it's happening. The opportunity is happening. <coughs> Excuse me. And what's really going on as I grab my coffee, because <coughs> this is really live. This is like what happens on, you know, on TV. You just never see it. What he's saying is, point blank, they lost a fortune. A fortune. This thing is rippling through the economy like an illness, and it's not done. But people are talking about Calhoun's bearing. They're talking about he dressed the dividend immediately. How fabulous was that? My friend Matt Horwein and I go back and forth. He's my writing partner. Matt thinks it's bottoming. Uh, I don't like to go against Matt. He didn't like it, didn't like it, didn't like it, didn't like it, didn't like it. I feel more confident than I have at any time unless a, a terrible incident occurs. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be quoted on YouTube and say, what well, he's confident. But when I, Gary Kelly, who's such a straight shooter, could have, he's so angry at Boeing. He could have easily said, I don't know when it's coming. I don't know. But I asked him, would you ever fly up? He goes, yes. I felt good. I haven't felt good about Boeing, like, since this happened. So over on Real Money this morning, Jim was talking about semiconductors, and you were talking about the move uh, and how you might have missed the move okay, if you're an investor trying to get it Six guys, now. six analysts, uh, bumped their target south uh, for Texan, Texas Instruments. I, I, I was on the call. There was nothing good. They're linked to automotive. They're not linked to Apple. Uh, and, and these analysts are, are this, the piece was about this. These, in my Real Money piece, the analysts are about trying to get back into the mix. They want to have a semi that they haven't missed. So they pick on Texas Instruments. Wrong stock to pick on. Not enough cell phone. And this market, by the way, you know, so you got China rolling over, which means Caterpillar's now going from 148 to 140, anything China. Uh, airlines going down uh, because of Boeing and because of the coronavirus. So you've got basically a, a moment which says, wow, we're rolling back the gains from when J.P. Morgan reported. I think that's very important. The Gary Kelly interview was seminal. I pressed Gary pretty hard. I mean, he feels good, but he doesn't feel good now. Now, why does that also matter? Because of the GE upgrade. I went to uh, Jeff and Zev. Of course, we're the people who do action alerts. I said, we've got to put GE in the bullpen. Uh, but the issue is, can you put GE in the bullpen before you know that we're closer to the max? I'm saying you have to. Uh, that recommendation today is very good. However, it's 11 going to 14. Unless, you know, how many unlesses? You know, the theme of my this is the word unless. You know, unless they can't get the corona under control. Unless they can't get Boeing to fly. There are so many unlesses, as opposed to unknowns, unlesses, that the market is on tenter hooks. Let's circle back to your real money column, because there's one thing that in particular that stood out to me, which was that you said that we need to wait for a pullback. So let's take this from an investing education standpoint. If I'm an investor looking for a pullback in any sector, not just semis, what are three signs? Okay, well, look, here's, uh, I wrote that piece in advance of doing another when Skyworks reports. So you need to see Apple continue to order. You need to see, uh, I mean, this is what really be bad. Let's say... Apple is hurt by Wuhan, by the coronavirus. You know, you got to see the coronavirus off the table. Okay. And then for the semis uniquely, uh, you've got to see who is taking share. And in this case, I'm talking about AMD versus Intel. Because AMD at 51, everything's got to be perfect. And you know how much I like AMD. It's got to be perfect. This whole got to be perfect thing is worrisome. Because uh, Liam Griffin, who runs Skyworks, is the best regular guy, terrific. What a job he's done. Uh, keeping right in the style of David Aldrich, who's amazing. A and it has to be so perfect. And unless it's perfect, unless. My theme. Unless Jimmy is your Chill. new theme. Jimmy Chill's theme. Hey, I saw a guy at, the, at Grand, Station, Grand Central Station where he goes, Jimmy Chill. So it's getting around. And Jimmy Chill, just you know, the what, what I'm talking about, Jimmy Chill, is let's say someone attacks me on Twitter, but does it in a civil way. I will come back and say, 
Jimmy Cho respectfully disagrees with you. But for the most part, I use it so that people recognize I don't want to fight no more. Tina Turner, right? I don't want to fight no more. It's time to let it go. Jimmy Chill is about, I don't want to fight no more. It's time to let it go. Jim, you mentioned a couple times the coronavirus, and it's had some impact on the market. But now we've Proctor got... I knew Proctor be up. I knew Proctor be up. Idiots and morons were selling it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, it beat on the EPS. It was just the revenue that came oh, in shot. Idiots. Come on. I mean, the dollar. Why are people so... You know, anyway. <laughs> so back to the coronavirus. We have seen now Singapore announced its first case of the yeah, coronavirus. Yeah, how about now thought it was over yesterday except for me? I remember Pete yesterday saying, are you kidding me? Like you trust the PRC to tell the truth? I mean, of course, it's now they say it's local officials. Well, I mean, that's great. Like uh, something bad happens in Philadelphia. Local officials, like there's a, the head of the country with local officials. are Although we did see that with President Bush and uh, the hurricane in Louisiana. They blamed the mayor. So, Jim, when do we know that the market reaction, have we seen the full extent of it? When will we see the full extent of it? We're, the way it works, Catherine, is, is, that we're, is that the bottom is going to happen before we see the full extent of it. Uh, the full extent of it will be a statement from the WHO, WHO saying we've identified it and we know who has it. And so, therefore, we can quarantine it. Um, I know some people are saying, Jim, you know, the regular flu kills a lot of people. That's absolutely true. Uh, transmitted human to human. Uh, but what, obviously what we're worried about is, is that the fatality rate goes up and that what we're seeing initially, you know, let's say everybody who has it who's over the age of 70 dies. I mean, that's what we got to find out. Um, the Chinese scientists have been uh, honest, interesting, um, and it's very clear that we're going to solve it because it's just not virulent like a SARS. So I say, and I did a piece yesterday for Mad Money, you're talking about maybe two, three more days of pain because they're going to solve this thing. Now, I have tremendous optimism we're going to solve it. Uh, and the reason I say that is because it's a variant of, of SARS, of which we really kind of plumbed the depths of. Uh, an outfit called Moderna uh, immediately said, listen, we're working on it. Glaxo, the biggest vaccine company, says they're not working on it. But Moderna has a platform, so they can easily say they're working on it. Go back and uh, look at my Moderna interview on CNBC.com, and you'll see um, they use Amazon Web Services to be able to calculate a lot of different things. This may be a mathematical equation in the end. So I am confident it will be solved, which means, I don't know, um, Monday? If you come into the weekend and there'll be a lot of, there'll probably be a, a lot, unfortunately, a lot more deaths, and that may be the peak. That'd be my bet. So by Monday, we might have I think more today. news on that. Well, but I think that by Monday, remember, you got to anticipate them saying it's done. Now, why, my, again, my confidence is that the people who are involved with th this, these kind of particular viruses are very, very good. It, you know, don't underestimate them. And remember, this is not Ebola. This is not nearly as complicated, and it's not SARS. It's not nearly as lethal. So I, um, it, but it is at the wrong time because this is the Chinese uh, New Year. It's the travel month. Now we don't have something like that. I mean, we have obviously the summer people out travel, but there's a lot of kind of like made-up holidays in China in order to stimulate consum consumption, and they have travel month. And I know it's like you know, hundreds of millions of people travel, and obviously that won't happen this time. We learn more and more about the oddities at the, of the PRC as they become, as President Trump has said, loved. They're loved. They love each other. Jim, before we go, I have one more topic that I want to talk about, and that's Tesla, because UBS boosted their price target on Tesla but kept the stock at a sell. 160 to 410. You see, when you see that kind of thing, in other words, they hit it at 160, but, you know, they were obviously wrong, right, because it went to, to 500. Now, here's what I've been saying about Tesla. And I, Jimmy Chill had to get in last night on Twitter because there was someone saying, oh, now Kramer's pumping it. Now, remember, uh, in the second week of November, I came out and said, you can look where the chart is and said, look, I drove it. I've done the work. The quarter was better. I wanted to see that better quarter. Now, you could say, well, why didn't you jump ahead of that better quarter? And I said, well, OK, look, shoot me. Jimmy Chill says, shoot me. The issue was you needed to have that level of comfort in the balance sheet. Because if you had that level of comfort in the balance sheet, then you were able to go all in. So sorry I missed the bottom. Uh, but what I would say with Tesla is it's the battery, stupid. Um, someone is going to, when I met with Elon Musk when he called me a simulation, which was, of course, mortifying, um, and he did it to mortify me in terms of some very big people, including Will I Am. 
Uh, and oh, uh, but you know, last uh, he laughs last last. Uh, the woman from Theranos was there. So I mean, I may have been wrong about disagreeing with the Musk man, but yeah, you got Elizabeth Holmes there. It turns out that is there a bigger phony than her? Even Jimmy Chill has to say that. But and this is what's important. What was Musk talking to me about that he that he uh, mortified me? He was saying that one day we will have all the power supply come from a corner of Northwest Colorado. He said it could happen in five years. Well, hey, hey, guess what? It's now six. Um, and I said I thought that was un- that was unlikely because of the power companies would never. It's it just the friction; it would not work. But what is he thinking about? He's thinking about compact electrical generation. Now, what's the next leap? Battery. This man, our own Edison, needs to be protected, a la President Trump, who's willing to protect the, the person who patented the wheel, but not the pulley or the wedge. But, uh, and I don't mean wedge like the great salad that my wife likes. With the, you know, the lettuce, the sauce is very full of calories. Bacon on top. Add those calories in. It's worth it. Why don't you just give me a heart attack? Will you stop it with the cholesterol? But, you know, it is very clear that the reason why there are people who want to shit in this game is when he unveils the battery that lasts a thousand miles, it's, 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 it's game, set, match. And that's what he's, I believe he's working on. And I say that because when he was uh, busy crushing me, he was talking about the notion of having more electricity at your command. Uh, what is that? That means long battery life. You know, I'm sure he's sitting there thinking, I, like, I can't be constrained by having to charge anymore. Uh, and that's what it's really about at this point. That's why I say it's technology on wheels. Uh, I wish I could see him again. I, you know, it, fortunately, Brian Krasanich, the deposed CEO of Intel, when he said there was, when Elon said there was a 50% chance that I was a simulation, um, Brian Krasanich did come back and say that it could be more like 27% because he's more of a, he's a mathematician. I always enjoyed that repartee at my expense. Uh, but uh, Musk was, uh, honestly, that's the old Musk, the vicious, uh, rabid dog Musk. And he's become Elon Schill. Elon Chill. Elon Chill. So, Jim, is the battery enough to convince Wall Street that yes. Tesla is more than a cult stock? Yeah, it's not a cult stock. It's a technology stock. You know, you know GM's got a, a electronic vehicle. And, you know, who, no one buys it. The Japanese, no one buys it. I was in the Beamer. The Beamer electronic vehicle. I was like, hey, no one buys it. They buy the Tesla. And not because of the flatulence whoopee cushion, which is what my daughter thinks, but because of all the accoutrements, because of the screen because of the ride, because of the speed, because of the style. I mean, I think that the pickup may be as ugly as the Edsel, but it's beauty's in the eye of the beholder. All right, Jim, thanks for joining us today. Guys, we are now heading over to our Action Alerts Plus Daily Rundown show where I'm going to ask Jim about his Grubhub interview. I'm very curious about this one and more. So head on over there with us. I'm Catherine Ross, and we'll see you tomorrow.